YouTube, it's Dan here, and it's time for my top 10 list of designers or less expensive fragrances of 2011. Now, when it comes to my top 10 list for the year, it's not based off of fragrances that were released in that year. It's based off of fragrances that I got my nose on for the first time and I was thoroughly impressed with and I think are good recommendations. So, with that in mind, let's do this. And starting off at number 10 is... Guerlain's Shalimar. Now this fragrance is a work of art in a bottle. The only true fragrance masterpiece I have come across yet to date. The only reason why it's at number 10 is because it's not necessarily my taste. It has a slightly creamy powdery feel to it and that's not really my type of thing and normally fragrances like that can kind of turn my stomach but this one uh, does not. I believe a man can pull off Shalimar as well, especially if you're a man that likes them kind of fragrances, the creamy, powdery type of fragrances. And this one, oh, uh, this one <laughs> takes you for a ride. I respect the hell out of this juice big time. Love this one. It starts off animalic, then goes into some citrus, then the incense moves in, and then it finishes off as a gourmand, just like this smooth as hell vanilla cookie dough kind of smell, just delicious as hell, and the stuff lasts forever. So, uh, mad props to Shalimar from me, no doubt about that. Now, moving on to number nine, I have got Burberry Brent. Now this one took me a while to get to, and it just goes to show you, don't believe everything that you hear, because with this one, there is a lot of talk about this one being a powder bomb. And for me, it is not. For me, it's more of a creamy, billowy type of feel. Very soft comes off fresh. It's got spiciness in there from the nutmeg, so I love that. When I'm wearing this fragrance, I don't know, I just feel damn good, and I did get a lot of compliments with this one. Now, moving on to number eight, John Barbados 10th Anniversary Edition. Finally, a fragrance from the Barbados house with some longevity, and this one's great as well, because just like the original, just like vintage, this one starts off rich and warm. It's got cinnamon, amber, and leather, but this fragrance is focused on vetiver. So do I love that? you damn right I do. Now, moving on to number seven, I have Michael Kors for Men. Boy, was this fragrance a happy little surprise in a bottle. For 25 bucks, you get yourself some killer juice for the cooler months. We're talking rich, warm, dry fruit, tobacco, incense. The only thing with this one is that it sits a little bit closer to the skin, but uh, sometimes it's not a bad thing if you don't want to get sent home from work, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, moving on to number six, I've got Tim McGraw's Southern Blend. Now what we've got here is another cheapy rock star, no doubt about that, as far as I'm concerned. Boy, the flavor in this juice just rocks. What you've got here is an amber-based fragrance with a whiskey sweetness at the top and tobacco in there as well. How could you go wrong? But the only thing is, is it sits a little bit soft to the skin as well. But as we just discussed, sometimes that's not always a bad thing. And this one did garner lots of compliments in my world, so you can't argue with that. Now, moving on to number five, I have got Eau de Beau from L'Occitane. What we have here is another killer fragrance for the cooler months. I just love the top of this thing. I love the way it comes out of the gate screaming at you. Got a whole ton of stuff going on. You got cypress, incense, pepper, loud and proud. Bam, here I am. Now, some people are not a fan of that top. I am. Uh, but quickly, that departs, and you're left with what I consider to be like a softer, more gentler tobacco vanille. Uh, so if you're a fan of that fragrance, but you find it to be a little bit too powerful, Eau de Beau is definitely a great one to look into, and the longevity rocks. Now moving on to number four, a recent discovery brought to light from the man, Alex, Masters of Style himself, 24 Gold. Because I'm going to swear for this one, holy shit, damn, what the hell. Holy smokes, I cannot believe the serious power, quality of juice, you get out of something called 24 gold for 50 bucks. Crazy nuts, man. What you get out of it is a heavily amber-based fragrance with killer power, killer longevity, and not only that, it has a very dark, smoky, woody quality involved as well. So do I love that? You're damn right I do. <laughs> 
I am sorry that I gave the bottle away, but I'm very glad that I kept some for myself. <laughs> now, moving on to number three, I have got Gucci Pour On One. Of course, this fragrance is going to be at the top of my list. It's just got Dan written all over it. What we've got here is a cedar fragrance with incense, with pepper, a touch of leather. And this fragrance has a soft, almost fresh quality about it that I believe could be a signature scent worn all year long. So do I appreciate that? you damn right love this juice. Moving on to number two, I have got Ego Est by Chanel. This fragrance for me is one of those fragrant days in my history that I will never forget going to my sample drawer, pulling this out, and sniffing it for the first time after I had been sitting on it for well over a year, and I was just thoroughly blown away. Like niche quality juice. Oh, I just could not believe what I was smelling was not what I was expecting at all. The top of this, the reformulated version, can come off a little too harsh for some people with the lavender, but quickly that fades into one hell of the best fragrances for fall. Oh, no doubt about that. Blends with the fall air just beautifully and what you've got going on is a mixture of cinnamon, sandalwood, vanilla, a touch of rose, and a touch of tobacco. Just gorgeous as hell and the stuff lasts forever. And if you can get your hands on the cologne concentrate like I did, boy, that stuff just steps it up a notch. <laughs> Even richer and bolder. Powerhouse killer juice. Now, moving on to number one. What in the hell did I put at number one of my top ten designers of 2011? <laughs> Here we go. None other than Chanel's Blue de Chanel. Oh, I can already hear the gasps from some of you out there already. <laughs> but I stand by my decision. This fragrance is at number one because it is the most versatile of them all. Uh, I don't find anything generic or a cheap quality about it whatsoever. I find it to be a very well-crafted, fresh fragrance. This fragrance at the top starts off with the citrus cocktail, but quickly becomes a vetiver ginger fragrance. Fresh and green. Do I love that? Hell yeah I do. Does this fragrance get compliments? Hell yeah it does. Does this fragrance last me all day? Hell yeah it does. Uh, do I like this? Hell yeah I do. <laughs> so, uh, Blue de Chanel. And this one, I recommend this one to everybody in my personal life. Uh, when girls are coming up to me asking me, Dan, the fragrance guy, what they should get their man for a birthday present or something, I say Blue de Chanel, or if a guy comes up to me and asks me, Dan, what should I get that's going to last me all day, that smells good, that gets compliments? What do I say? Blue de Chanel! <laughs> you damn right I do. And not once have I ever had anybody, anybody, come back and was pissed. Everybody thoroughly happy with my recommendation. So, uh, I have a very high regard for Blue de Chanel for a lot of reasons. But, that is it. That's the top 10 designers for 2011. Next will be coming niche, so stay tuned for that. But you guys take care, and we'll see you soon.